This is a lesson on permutations with restrictions. So we'll be looking at the regular permutation or the arrangements with the fundamental counting principle and permutation notation, but throwing in a few wrinkles that make it impossible just to get the answer directly. So to start us off though, let's do some algebra. And these questions show up and they also help us to solve more complicated problems. So you're, for now, you're just being asked to simplify the following factorial expressions, such as this, n factorial over n minus 2 factorial. The nature of um, factorials are that they always go in descending order down to 1. And that's a problem when you're solving equations that include factorials, should that ever happen. Because you can't really determine whether it's a quadratic or whatever degree that you've got because it's going to be going all the way down to 1. So n, minus, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So you just don't know where to stop with it. But there is a way to simplify them. And if you see something like this, one factorial stacked on top of the other, you want to remember that n factorial is, as I said, equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to 1. That is, it goes down in descending order like that. And then the method we use we take the bigger of the two and we break it down until it equals the smaller. So for this one, n factorial and then n minus 2 factorial, n is larger than n minus 2. Has to be. It's bigger. We're subtracting 2 for the second one. So we um, break that first one down and notice what I did. n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and I didn't keep going forever down to 1. As soon as I saw that it was equal to the second one, I stopped. And I, by putting this factorial symbol on, really that just means, you know, etc., so on. So once you get to this point, then your n minus 2's are going to go away. And then, and only then, can you cancel them, giving you n times n minus 1. And we're done. Let's do another one. 3n minus 2r plus 1 factorial over 3n minus 2r plus 3 factorial. Now this is the larger on the denominator because it's plus 3. Everything's the same. So I'll leave that numerator as is, 3n minus 2r plus 1, and I'll be patient with it. But I'll take that denominator and write that as 3n minus 2r plus 3, then 3n minus 2r go down by 1, so that's plus 2, and then 3n minus 2r plus 1, and then that's the factorial there because we know that they're going to cancel. And then we've got 1 on the numerator over top of 3n minus 2r plus 3 multiplied by 3n minus 2r plus 2. Now you could FOIL those out, but there's really not much point. And so that is our answer. You're probably wondering what possible good could this have? Well, this the value of this method is when you're getting equations that involve factorials. And that's what these next two problems will be about. Here we're asked to solve the following equations for n. Number one is n pick 2 is equal to 90. Well, in fact, if you got a question like this given to you, many of you would just solve it by substitution, by trial and error. See what pick 2 is equal to 90. Of course, on an exam, if it's a multiple choice question, that's a legitimate way to do it. But I'm going to go through this one in the true algebraic way. And in order to do that, we use the expansion of a pick that uh, we looked at last lesson, but really didn't think we needed too often. So happens that n pick r is equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial, which is usually provided for you. And if you go back into this question, then you can expand this one in terms of that. So this becomes n factorial over the difference of the two, that is n minus 2 factorial. 
equal to 90. And now we can apply that method we just learned to expand that numerator n to n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on, divided by n minus 2 factorial. And then this is equal to 90. And then those n minus 2's cancel. And we're left with n times n minus 1 is 90. This is a quadratic, because when you distribute that n in, and then bring the 90 over, as you should always do for quadratics, you get this. n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to 0. Then when that factors, you get n minus 10 times n plus 9. Okay. And then, that will leave you with n is equal to 10 or n equal negative 9. Now the thing of it is, when you're using either factorials or pick, you cannot keep the n. And so you cannot have a negative number. And that will force us to reject that n equal negative 9 and work simply with n equal 10. So we reject n equal negative 9, and our answer is n equal 10. So we're done. Let's try another one, a little more complicated. n pick 6 is equal to 8 times n minus 1 pick 5. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take these pick terms and I'm going to expand them. So n pick 6 is n factorial over n minus 6 factorial. And this is equal to 8 multiplied by n minus 1 factorial, which is our numerator, divided by n minus 1 minus 5. So be really careful because you're taking the difference of those two expressions. Now that can be simplified and should be simplified. We will then get n factorial over n minus 6 factorial is equal to 8 times n minus 1 factorial and then the denominator is n minus 6 factorial. Now we could do a number of things with this. Some of you might be tempted to take that n and the n minus 6 and expand the n until it's equal to n minus 6, as we have been doing, and it will work. It's just that you're going to have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to n minus 5 when you cancel, and that's going to be a little tough to solve, although possible. So what I would advise you to do is to clean up your denominators. Multiply everything by n minus 6 factorial. Multiply both all terms by the unwanted denominator. And in doing so, you will be left with, because the denominators are going to cancel, you'll just have n factorial is equal to 8 times n minus 1 factorial. So it's way simpler. And if you divide both sides by n minus 1 now, you get n factorial over n minus 1 factorial, and that's equal to 8. And we've been here before. We expand the bigger till it's equal to the smaller. Well, the bigger in this case is n. That must be bigger than n minus 1. So that would expand into n times n minus 1, and then stop. Put the factorial on to indicate it keeps on going. And then that n minus 1 factorial on the bottom is equal to 8. Cancel those, and then we get n is equal to 8. So that worked out very nicely. And if you wanted to verify, excuse my spelling, you would just go 8 pick 6 is equal to 8 times 8 minus 1 pick 5 and see where it took you. So using your calculator, using your pick keys, work out that n pick 6. And you're going to get you're going to get a big number, of course. This would be 20,160. But let's see what else we get. 8 times 7 pick 5. 
So key in 7, pick 5. Take that answer, multiply by 8, and lo and behold, you get the same answer. So we did, it did work out. Now I'm going to turn my attention to, to um, word problems that are another type sort of, of restriction, if you like. So very different sorts of questions than the previous ones. But here, if all the letters of the word diploma are used, then how many seven-letter arrangements beginning with three vowels are there? So these restrictions aren't really anything really critical. You can often fumble your way through them, but I will point out a few things that will help when you're solving these. So we begin with three vowels out of these, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letter word. I really recommend, I recommend that you start out, you, that you use the fundamental counting principle when you're working these ones out. Even if you intend to use factorial or the pick notation to solve, sketch out these slots just to see what's going on. And often it's the easiest way to solve it too. Because all that's going on now is that we're having three vowels to start it off. What's interesting about this question is that um, we actually have one, two, all we have is three vowels. The other ones are consonants. So for the vowels, the way, a number of ways we can choose those vowels is to, we have three choices for the first one, we have two for the second, and then we have one vowel for the third, one possibility. And once you get those vowels out of the way, there's really just four choices left. So four for the next one, three for the one after that, two, and then one. And then all we do now is work these ones out. And that should give us 144 arrangements. So you're thinking nothing really much of a stretch on this one. But keep in mind, you could have that taken those vowels and just gone three factorial. And then the other, which really is just consonants, would have been four factorial and then multiplied. Or for vowels, it wouldn't have been easier, but you could have said, well, I have three vowels to select from, so I pick three. And then for the other ones, I have four to select from, so four pick four. I really recommend, though, the original setup. At least understand the question. Let's take a look at a couple more. In how many ways can four boys and five, uh, five, five boys and four girls be seated in a row so the, the, that the girls occupy the even positions? So before we do anything else, let's get the slots. If the girls occupy the even positions, it means that there has to be a girl there, has to be a girl there, has to be a girl there, and has to be a girl there. And then you're having a boy must be there, and then there, and then there, and then there, and then there. And if you approach it like this, with the fundamental counting principle, you could just say, well, there's five boys that could occupy that first position. There are four choice of four girls for the next position. We're down to four boys for the next slot. And then we're down to three girls. We're down to three boys. You're down to two girls, two boys, and then one, and then one. And then all you need to do now is multiply them together. And if you do that, you will get two eight eight zero ways. And that's fine. Now that's a little awkward. So again, we could break it down into boys, break the boys down, and then break the girls down. Because the boys are fixed in position. They're there there, there, and there. So you could really just arrange those boys in those positions 
And because there's five of them, it's going to be five factorial ways to arrange the boys. And then the girls would be four factorial. And you will get the same answer. And I mentioned this last lesson, and I'll mention it again. Very helpful, instead of going into the factorial key all the time, to think, well, 5 factorial, I know that that's 120. And 4 factorial is 24. So if you keep those ones down, then you don't have to worry about you going into that menu. And of course, this one you could also have used slots, or you could have used uh, pick notation. I didn't bother, and I, I won't go through that one. One more question. In how many ways can four boys and four girls be seated in a row if no two boys or two girls can be seated next to each other, if that makes any sense? Meaning that they can't be side by side. It has to be boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, or, or something like that. Well, the first way to go after this one is to put a boy there, put a girl there, put a boy, girl, boy there, and then a girl there boy there, girl there, boy there, girl there. And for boys, we have four to choose from. For girls, we have four to choose from. And then it will be descending down from there. Three, three, two, two, one, one and then you multiply that out. Now the other thing is, of course, as we did in the previous question, you think boys four factorial, think girls who are in those fixed positions also four factorial, and then multiply the two together. And you get 576. Now, a very common mistake to make is to stop right there. The difference between this question and the previous one is that this one didn't actually insist that it was boy, girl, boy, girl. It could have been girl, boy, girl, boy, etc. Et so what you got to do is take that, consider that revert, the other scenario. Now you could do it again, set up the slots and add the two together, or just multiply by two because that will, you have the exact same number. So 576 times 2 is 1152. So there are, in fact, 1152 ways. These questions really force you to pay attention. The math is never difficult, and the setups usually are fairly simple, too, but you really have to be thinking about what you're doing with them. So I will leave it at that. The next lesson will have more restrictions, but a little more formal in the approach, so specific methods for specific types of questions. Thank you.